Good morning, good morning. This is Elder Michael Stibick from Higher Ground Temple at 203 Vine Street in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, coming to you again here at 8 o'clock on another Monday morning, another week that God has seen fit to bring me to. And I do appreciate it. Thank you, God. This is the day that you have made. And we're going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. Because you have seen fit, God, to carry us through, to watch over us, to keep us, to protect us, to, to just to be that loving Father, amen, that is constantly, constantly on the lookout for us, making sure that wh whatever we get from you, amen, is going to be good. Now, we may go off on our own sometimes, and we may create some problems for ourselves, but that you are looking always to bless us. Um, that you, God, want more for us even than what we want for ourselves. So we thank you, God, for waking us up. We thank you here on the last day of August of 2020. It has been a bizarre year. It has been a strange year. It certainly has been a year with some challenges. Amen. But those challenges have also provided opportunities to us to grow in you. And so we thank you, Lord, even for the struggle. Amen. Because it's there to make us stronger. So we thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. I am glad to be here at 8 o'clock on I Know I'm Royalty, uh, just trying to share the Word of God, um, to try and share with the people how to get stronger in the Lord. Amen. Um, not to get, not not necessarily get physically stronger. Amen. We want to get stronger in the Lord. This this is not an exercise class. This is not a workout class. This is this is a word to strengthen you in the Lord. Amen. That that when the struggles come, that when the trials come, you can get through them depending on God. Why? Because you know him so well. You know what he wants you to do. You know how he wants you to get through things. And you trust and believe that he is going to bring you out of it. And he will every time. Amen. I know that you've been through some things. I know that I've been through some things. But you know what? We are still here. We are still on this side of eternity. And God still has a work for us to do. Everything up till now has just been a, a preparation for what he has called you to do, that great work that he has called you to. Um, so just continue to be strong, amen. Continue to tune in, amen. Continue to pray on your own. I think I see Darry Baker Connor on there, the early riser. It's good to see you on this Monday morning. It is a beautiful day out there. Um, I have been up already, went for a little bit of a walk, and it is nice out there today. So if you get a chance, after you get off here, amen, get out and get a little bit of that sunshine, get a little bit of that nice fresh air. It will do you good. Um, but, but we are here today, amen, to talk about that internal battle, amen. So before we get into the internal battle, we always want to be prayed up, amen, when we go into battle. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for waking us up today, God. We thank you for the provision that you have given us, God. We thank you for carrying us through, God. We thank you, Lord, that while we slept, while we slumbered, while we were defenseless last night, that you watched over us, that you protect us, while we weren't even thinking about breathing, thinking about our heartbeat, thinking about how to, how to watch over ourselves, that you you never sleeping, never slumbering, were there to watch over us. God, we thank you for waking us up to a brand new day, God, a day of opportunities day. We ask you, Lord, um, to give us the direction for the day, Lord, to set our path, um, to lead us and guide us, God, that your Holy Spirit direct us today. We ask you, Lord, for all those that are tuning in to watch, God, um, that you prepare their hearts Prepare their minds that the seed might fall in good soil and bear good fruit. And as always, God, before I teach, before I preach, before I do anything, put me aside, God. Set me aside, God. Um, and you do the speaking, God. You've, you've given me what to study. You've given me what to look at. But I'm asking you, God, for you to speak today. Um, because I can reach some people sometimes, but you can reach everybody every time. So we thank you, God, for this morning. Uh, we thank you for getting us started on our way. And we look forward to you taking care of us through the entire day in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And there's my lovely wife, Jerry Stibbick coming on. Um, it's, it's always encouraging to see you out there, hun, to know that you are, that you are back there backing me up. Amen. Cause we're talking about today. We're talking about that internal battle today. Um, we're talking about that battle that 
that Paul talked about in Romans chapter 7. Amen. But I love what Paul, he went over in Romans chapter 7, verses 20, or sorry, Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 24. Paul sets the stage for what the battle is that we face. Amen. But I love it because he comes right back. So we're going to look at Romans 7, 14 through 24 first. But I love it because he comes back in Romans 8, 11 through 14, and he gives us, amen, the way to win the battle. Amen. So we're going to look at 7, 14 through 24 at, at what is the battle? What is the this this fight that we face every day within ourselves? And then we're going to look at Romans 8, 11 through 14, and we're going to see Paul is letting us know, here's how you come out victorious in this battle. And we know we're going to be victorious. We know that in the, we're, in the end we're victorious um, because, because Jesus has said it is so. Amen. But, but how about we go out and, and, and win the battles, amen, as well as the war, amen, that, that we go out and we start living better, that we start doing better um, from right now and moving forward. Um, so first we're going to look at Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 24, and verse 14 begins, we know that the law is spiritual. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I love it. This and and now he's he's getting into the battle. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do I do not do, but what I hate to do, and I do what I do not want to do. I agree that the law is good. So he's saying I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. He says, I wake up every morning and I want to go out and I want and I want to do right. And I want to go out and I want to love my brother and my sister. And I want to go out and I want to love God. And I want to go out and I want to tell people about Jesus. And I want to, and I wake up every morning and I want to do all these things. And, and, and as I come across a temptation, I go, no, no, don't go to it. Don't bite on it. Don't let the devil take you down that path. He says, but then I keep on doing it. Even though I know I don't want to do it. Even though I've said I don't want to do it. Even though in my heart I don't want to do it. Why do I keep on doing all these things? And we've and we've all got our things. Amen. Some things that we came across in our life that were, that were an issue for us. Um, you know, we, 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 we gave them up and we moved on from very easily, but there just seems like there's those some things, man, that no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to get past it. Maybe, maybe, maybe before you were saved, maybe you, maybe you were a drinker and a cusser and, and, and you, and you like to sleep around. Amen. And maybe you moved on from the sleeping around and the drinking real easy, but that cussing, for some reason, you just can't get it out of your mouth and you want to get it out of your mouth. It's in your heart to get it out of your mouth. And you're going, I don't understand why I can't get rid of this thing. I remember we had a, uh, a, uh, a, one of the, one of the elders that used to come to our church. Amen. And he would say, you know, he, he was, he was a drinker. Um, and, and a smoker. He said the alcohol, he gave up no problem. The alcohol, he said, he decided one day I'm not doing it anymore. And he just stopped. Amen. But then, but then he talks about, but the smoking, he says, he says, that was the thing. He says, I I knew it was bad for me. I knew it was killing me. I knew I didn't want to do it anymore. He said, but that I just could not give up. Amen. Because the flesh in that area was just rising up against them. It says, and then he goes on to say, starting in verse 17, as it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but the sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. So he wants to do good. He's trying to do good, but he just can't seem to carry it up. He can start it, but he can't carry it through to the end. He can get better for a day or two, but he can't carry it through to the end. He can do better for a little while, but I can't carry it out. I can formulate the plan in my brain. I can reason how to get there. He says, but I just can't carry out the plan. Amen. It's it's like when I was younger, I would play sports, and and now that I'm older, I can still see the plays that I used to make, but the body just won't get me there. I can see it, but I just can't carry it out. He can see what he wants. He can he can reason how to get there, but he just can't carry out the plan. Because that flesh, that flesh, that flesh keeps rising up within him. He says, "For what I do is not the good that I want to do. I want to go out and I want to do good." 
No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Amen? So, so it's just these things that keep biting us, keep jumping up on us. And he goes on and he's making it clear. He's, he's kind of really, I love the way he goes on a little bit about it because he could have just stated it once and dropped it there. Deborah Cream coming on, it's good to see you this morning. He could have, but I like the way he carries up because he's showing the anguish that he has, the, the internal struggle. He's showing by going on like this, he's showing that it's a, it's a fight and he's trying to fight the good fight, but he just can't seem to come out on top. He says, for I know the good I want to do, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. And he says, now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. And he says, so I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. So at my very core of my being, Patricia Phillips, it's good to see you this morning. So at the very core of my being, with all of my heart, I want to do good. He's saying, I delight in God's law. He's talking about trying to obey God's law. He's talking about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He's talking about loving your neighbor like yourself. And he's saying, in my very heart, in the very core of my being, in everything that I am, I want to do these things. He says, but yet my flesh rises up against me and and the flesh seems to keep winning the battle. He says, but I see another law at work in my members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. And he says, what a wretched man I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? And he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, so you can really feel Paul's struggle here. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a real battle, um, that we go, that we have gone through. And I think a real battle that we will continue to go through until the very end of our days. As long as we're walking around in this flesh, it is a battle that we're going to have. Amen. And we get better in certain areas. There are a lot of areas of my life that I used to battle with. Um, but now, but, the, but, but just because I've overcome some of them doesn't mean I don't have some that still rise up. Especially there's a, there's a procrastination sometimes that comes on me. And, and I know I want to go out and I want to do exactly what I'm told to do right when I'm told to do it. But for sometimes, man, that, that flesh just rises up. That flesh is like, I don't want to today. I don't, and, and and so we've got that, even no matter how mature we get in the Lord, no matter how much we seek his face, no matter how much, right, but it seems like, amen, every once in a while, that flesh will rear its ugly head up, amen, and have us doing the very things that we know we don't want to do, amen, so so he has laid out very clearly here, he's laid out the anguish, he's laid out the, the internal struggle that he has going on, and it's one that we can all relate to, uh, but we never want to just give you an issue here, amen, we never want to just say, look, this is the thing, and, and, not, and not give you some instruction, amen, on how you go about winning this battle, amen, and, and so we're going to jump over to Romans chapter 8, verses 11 through 14, because here is where we see that Paul gives us the way to work it out. Amen. And if we go Romans chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 11, and we're going to go through 14. And, and verse 11 begins, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, through his spirit. Amen. So he's saying, look, you, we, we've got this problem with our flesh. Amen. We've got this fight against our flesh all the time. And, and what we've got to realize is that only one thing can help you win that battle. And that is the very spirit of God. Amen. And the thing is, we know that we all have the spirit of God in us. Every person does. Because it says when when Adam was, was first created, he was just a lifeless formless lump of clay and it was God that breathed into him and gave him life so we all have God's spirit within us and so and so we all have the potential to overcome the flesh why because we have the spirit of God in us and it says and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead 
is living in you and he is in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit. So the very breath of God, the very Spirit of God is the only thing that can that can help you win this battle against the flesh. And he goes on to say in verse 12, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit uh, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. Amen. So here's the thing. The nice thing is, here's the encouraging thing, is that, that every single person has the ability to come over. There's this flesh that wants to rise up within us. Um, and, and every single one of us has this issue, but every single one of us also has the ability to overcome this issue, no matter how great it is, no matter, no matter how much it seems to gnaw at us. Um, we have the ability to overcome it because we've got the Spirit of God within us. Amen. And, and there's a teaching that Bishop Barron, you, you know, went, went through for a while. Um, and really what it was about is, is about, he, he used to talk about, you got, you got to starve the flesh, amen, and feed the spirit. Because whatever you feed is going to get stronger. So how do you win that battle against the flesh is you've got to starve the flesh and feed the spirit, amen? If you wake up, I've been watching we um, on TV, I, saw, I see this commercial every once in a while for this, this thing called, this, this show called Love Island, amen? Now, if you feed your flesh Love Island, amen, if Love Island is and that type of programming is what you decide to make a part of your daily diet for your flesh, amen, then, then your flesh is going to rise up. Your flesh is going to be unruly. Amen. But if you're watching your favorite preacher, amen. If you're reading your scripture, if you're in prayer, what happens now? See, see, so if you, if you're watching Love Island, what's happening is the flesh is right. There's, there's two ways to defeat an enemy. You, you either, so it's, let's say I'm, I'm the spirit, amen. And I'm fighting against the flesh over there. There's two ways to defeat the enemy. Either I can make myself stronger or I can make the enemy weaker or I can do both. Amen. And what's happening now? So, so if we got, if we got, we got a stalemate here, we got, we got the spirit and we got the flesh and they're fighting it out and they're fighting out and it's a stalemate. So what happens now is, is if I start watching Love Island, all right, and here we have the flesh. If I watch Love Island and I make that my diet, amen. We, and if anybody, you haven't seen the commercial, it's, it's a bunch of young, people half naked talking about how they're looking for true love in Las Vegas. Amen. So, so if that's what you're making a steady part of your diet, what's going to happen is the, the right. So the flesh is getting stronger. So now the flesh is gaining the upper hand on the spirit. Amen. And, and while, and while you're watching that too, that's killing your spirit. So, so now you got them, you got them moving like this. The flesh is getting stronger and stronger and and the body is getting weaker and weaker. Amen. And so what happens now you start, now you got to flip that script. Amen. You got you got to turn off Love Island and, and even and it's not I'm gonna say, I'm using Love Island because it's that extreme. But I want to tell you even even Jerry and I there are programs that we have started watching. Amen. Programs that we watch for a long time. Amen. And what happens is now all these they start introducing characters. They start introducing plot lines. I love it, honey. Put it up there. So to the flesh and reap corruption. So to the spirit and reap eternal life. I love it, baby. Thanks for backing me up there. So, so, so there are certain things that, that was, that, that if we had kept watching them and it started out as an innocent show, everything was fine, but then they start introducing characters. They start introducing plot lines. And, and sometimes we've been there, man. You know what, man? Something's just not sitting right with my spirit in this show anymore. You, you know, you, you listen to a certain radio station, and all of a sudden, eh, you know what, something's not sitting right with me with this radio station, amen. Sometimes it's a friend that you have in your life. That friend was walking you with it, that friend was strong, and all of a sudden that friend starts going a different way, all of a sudden, eh, you know what, the, the, what they're doing just isn't, sorry. So, so if you see that happening, you see these things, that, that are that are so into the flesh, amen. That are so into the flesh, and it's getting stronger, and the spirit's getting. Weak. You got to flip that script, and you you got to turn off those things, amen. 
that are feeding the flesh, amen, and start turning on those things that feed the spirit, amen. That's why That's why there was a time the disciples, they couldn't cast, they couldn't cast the demon out of the boy, amen, and, and, and then Jesus came along, Jesus cast the demon out. And, and, and the disciples said, why couldn't we cast out that demon? And Jesus tells them, he says, why? Because some of these, amen, can only come out by fasting and prayer. That's right. We, by denying the flesh, amen. And at the same time, he flipped the script. He says, I'm going to deny the flesh. The flesh is up here. The spirit said, I'm going to, I'm going to deny the flesh. I'm going to bring the flesh down. And at the same time, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to lift up my spirit. I'm going to strengthen my spirit, man. You think about if you go into a battle, amen. If if you if you if you give the if you give the flesh, amen. You give the flesh, you know, the assault rifles. You give the flesh hand grenades. You give the flesh cruise missiles. You give the flesh aircraft carriers. You give, you give the you give the flesh um, a Navy SEAL team. And here and here you go in with the spirit with with nothing but with with nothing but. Uh, a butter knife, amen. You, you can't do it. You, if you want to win this battle, you've got to focus on strengthening your spirit day by day and weakening that flesh. And 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 so that's why I talked about we got to do fasting and prayer. And I want to just make this distinction to it. That doesn't mean weaken your body, amen. Weakening the flesh. When we talk about the flesh is not the same as the body. So don't think that just depriving the body alone, amen, is not depriving the flesh, amen. In fact, sometimes really making your body stronger a lot of times makes the flesh weaker. Why? Because you know what? Jerry and I have been eating better. We've been exercising. And I want to tell you my flesh, this is the difference. My flesh, when I wake up in the morning, when I woke up this morning, we were up at 530 so we could get out to the park, get get a four mile walk in before we did the broadcast today. My flesh this morning did not want to get out of bed and take the walk. Amen. But God wants me to take care of the temple that he gave me for his spirit to dwell in. So the spirit took over, right? So it looks like it looks like by eating right, it looks like by eating better, but it looks like by exercise and it looks like right, it's strengthening the body, but it's that it's the spirit still that's being strengthened. I want to distinguish that the flesh is that the flesh is not the body that we care for. The the body is is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is what carries us, amen, so that we can do the things that the spirit leads us to do. When we talk about the flesh, we're talking about that that we're talking about the petulant child within us, right? We're talking about that child that wants to stomp his feet and hold his breath and, and kick and scream on the floor until we get that candy bar that we saw in the supermarket. We're, we're the one that wants that. We're, we're the, the flesh is that child in us. Amen. That, that wants that, 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 that mom won't get him the toy. So, so we take it out. We stuff it in our pocket. Amen. That's the flesh. Amen. So when we talk about the flesh, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about depriving your body. Amen. I'm talking about depriving your flesh, depriving, depriving those desires, amen, for the things that you know are not good for your spirit, amen, because we, we look at, um, and we know that it is a fight, we know that it is a battle, and, and Paul, even, even in other scriptures, if we go to Ephesians, um, we go to chapter 6, and go 11, 11 through 13, um, Jesus warns us, G, or I'm sorry, Paul, Paul warns us, Paul tells us, he says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, that's right. It is a battle. It is a battle day in and day out that we have with the flesh. Amen. So we've got to make sure we stand on our post in this battle, that we be disciplined in this battle, that really consistency is the key to winning the battle. 
You can go out there and, and you can win and you can win a big battle one day. Amen. But if you decide, okay, I'm happy that I won that battle today and I'm not going to get on the wall tomorrow. Amen. Then the enemy is going to come back and overrun you the next day. It talks about, it talks about Jesus says that, you know, you, you can, you kick that spirit out of the house. Amen. But, and you clean up the house and you get everything in order. He says, but then, but then what happens is, is if you're not careful, that, that spirit will come back with seven more stronger. Amen. And it will bind you up again. So I just want to encourage you today um, as, as I'm about to head back out to work. Um, I got to be there at nine o'clock. So, um, but I want to encourage you today just to focus on your spirit man this week. I want to encourage you um, just, just to make sure that when you wake up, the first thing you do is thank God for waking you up. Start your day off with prayer. Amen. Start your day off just calling on the Spirit to fill you up and carry you through that day. Amen. And, and when that flesh tries to rise up and that flesh says, I'll just take a little bit of time and read this. Just take a little time and listen to this music that you know you shouldn't be listening to. Just take a little time. Deny that flesh. Amen. Starve that flesh out and strengthen your spirit. Amen. By what you do, by what you choose to look at, by what you choose to listen to, by who you choose to spend your time with. Starve that flesh and feed the very spirit within you. So I thank I thank you all for tuning in today. Um, I I will be praying for you. I mean I will be praying for you through the day. Um, that your spirits be strengthened. Amen. That you be able to have the victory today. Amen. Because all it takes a victory today, one tomorrow, then you get on a roll, and every day you start seeing victory in your life. But we got to focus again on strengthening that spirit and starving that flesh. So I thank you all for tuning in. I do have to I do have to kind of head out now. I'm not out of word, but I am out of time. I thank you all for tuning in. You all have a blessed day and and a blessed day in the Lord. God bless and I will look forward to seeing you. We'll be back on Thursday at eight o'clock and then Saturday at ten o'clock, our usual schedule for the week. God bless you all and have a great day.